In today's video, we have some latest trade talk on teams like the Vegas Golden Knights, the Vancouver Canucks, and the Toronto Maple Leafs, as well as the Philadelphia Flyers. We have some more news in regards to some signings, PTOs, injury updates, and some very interesting comments from Flames coach Daryl Sutter on Matthew Kachuk. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to talk about today. Uh, we do get confirmation, even though camp's already underway. Um, most places are only like a day or two in. Uh, Anton Strahlman is going to be joining the Bruins on a PTO. Obviously, he'll be a little bit late getting there. But we've seen speculation in the last couple of days um, that it could be him because we did get comments from the Bruins and Don Sweeney that they had extended a PTO to another player, but they were waiting to hear back. They, of course, never confirmed who the player was. Um, that probably would never do that. Um, but in the last probably 24 hours, I've seen numerous reporters um, uh, said they had enough information to suggest it was Strawman, and it looks like this is the case. Now, of course, with the injuries that they have going into the season, if he uh, does okay in camp, wouldn't shock me if he gets a one-year deal in Boston. I think the Bruins are going to be an interesting team in training camp. There's definitely some spots open with some significant injuries like Marshan, McAvoy, Grizzly to start the year. Um, the trick for them is going to be how do they become cap-compliant and activate all those players later on down the road. I mean, obviously, they're not in the greatest cap situation like a lot of teams, and uh, obviously probably take advantage of their LTI airspace a bit to start the year, but it's what comes next and what they do after that. That will certainly be an interesting thing to watch. I think you're going to see some common names that we've seen in the trade rumor mill uh, in the offseason that never materialized, whether it be Craig Smith, Mike Riley, uh, I'm not sure if they'd be able to move on from Nick Foligno, but like guys like that will be your most likely uh, cap victims, I guess we could call them, and we'll see what happens. But Strawman's joining the Bruins on a PTO. Uh, the Ottawa Senators announced a signing today. Uh, they've signed the second player from the 2022 draft class. It was fifth-round pick defenseman uh, Jorian Donovan, who was, uh, gets his three-year ELC. Of course, he is the son of Senators uh, player development coach Sean Donovan. Sean Donovan, of course, was a former first-round pick of the Sharks way back, played a fairly lengthy NHL career, finishing up uh, in Ottawa, of course, and then became uh, an employee of the team, has been there ever since, working uh, with player development, strength, conditioning, uh, really a well-respected guy in their organization. So he gets his uh, ELCs, had a pretty decent rookie camp and then first part of uh, NHL training camp, and uh, hopefully he's poised to go back into junior after all this and have a real strong season. Uh, so a few more injury updates. Uh, we got the word that the Minnesota Wild are not expecting Jordan Greenway or John Merrill to be able to start the year. Uh, Bill Guerin indicates he expects them to miss probably somewhere around the first 10 games each. Um, so that's certainly not great, but thankfully, you know, they're – there could be more significant players on the team that are dealing with stuff. So, um, you know, Greenway and Merrill will be uh, be joining them probably around uh, sometime early November. Uh, the Avalanche certainly dealt a bit of a blow as well. Captain Gabe Landeskog won't be available to start the season either. Uh, apparently he's not skating to start camp and won't be skating anytime soon, according to head coach Jared Bednar. Uh, and they didn't go into a lot of detail, indicating I believe it was a lower body injury and that uh, something that he's been dealing with um, but from the end of last season, of course, the end of last season where they won the Stanley Cup was a shorter window than some teams, so certainly didn't have as much time to recover uh, from whatever he's dealing with. So Landis Cog won't start the year, but uh, hopefully won't be out for too long. Uh, I know uh, some interesting comments today that I really I had to play it a few times to listen to it, but we all know if you're a hockey fan and you like listening to a lot of coaches uh, do their press conferences and media availabilities, Daryl Sutter, in my opinion, is always one of the best interviews. He He's so dry and to the point, not afraid to be blunt. Uh, listening to Sutter talk sometimes can be rather entertaining uh, and just uh, I don't know it's just you can't help but respect the guy he's been around so long and accomplished so much and some people are saying that he kind of absolutely destroyed Matthew Kachuk but I know there's certainly some fans of Kachuk that are responding and kind of saying that they were, they were stupid comments or whatever but essentially he was asked by a reporter uh, obviously with the changes of the team this year you know they went from having a top line of Lindholm, Gaudreau, Kachuk, uh, and now like they're going to have Tyler Toffoli uh, be a winger on the top line with Jonathan Huberto. Just ask basically to compare the difference between like a Matthew Kachuk and a Tyler Toffoli, and his response was just like you would expect, typical Daryl Sutter fashion, short, dry, to the point, 
and not afraid to, to say something that some people might be, uh, is he said, well, basically saying Toffoli has won Stanley Cups and been a part of deep playoff runs. And that's, you know, kind of how he just put it. And it's just kind of he really didn't was not afraid to really slander Kachuk in that regard. So obviously I, I take it that Sutter's not real crazy about what, uh, you know, Kachuk and Gaudreau leaving in the offseason, but certainly I think he's probably fairly pleased with the work that Trey Living did in the offseason, certainly bringing in guys like Huberto and Uyghur and Kadri. Uh, certainly gives them a lot of well-experienced, top talented players to uh, do their best to replace them. I guess the one thing, though, with Matthew Kachuk, especially compared to uh, even compared to Gaudreau, is the age. Obviously, he's still young enough. Whereas you know they're getting Kadri, who's yes a really good player coming off a career season, but he's much older than Matthew Kachuk, right? Uh, Mackenzie Weger, great defenseman, but it would have been nice to get him at a younger age. So you know Jonathan Huberdeau is. Pretty much the same age as Johnny Goudreau. Uh, so Huberdeau to Goudreau, it's a really a very similar kind of player. Both great skaters, good playmakers. Like you, You're not really going to miss a beat there. They're very, very, very comparable. But Kachuk just has a different element. Toffoli is a very different kind of player. Yes, he's got Stanley Cups to his resume, uh, but certainly not going to give you the higher level of production that Kachuk does. And he's a, a bit older and... What have you? But it was just very interesting to to hear those comments. Like he just has no filter sometimes, and there was that dry sense of humor and or the dry seriousness, depending on what he's saying. Um, you know, you can almost count on Daryl Sutter for some one-liners to get everybody going. Ooh, ah, and kind of talking about uh, the the Flames, what he had to say. Uh, moving on to the Maple Leafs, of course. Uh, we we talked a lot about a lot of injuries at the start of training camp, but one thing that we didn't talk about yet was Jake Muzzin. Uh, we talked about the fact that Muzzin, uh, a few times on the channel, is a defenseman that I think a lot of people are worried about, uh, just because he's had a lot of health issues and injuries over the last few years. But Jake Muzzin's going to be out again. He's already having issues with his back to start the season. Of all the things you can deal with. Back problems are concerning. I mean, look at the Philadelphia Flyers, classic case of Sean Couturier. Uh, you know, missed a big, big, big chunk of last year. Now he's going to be out for a big chunk of this year. Like, they're not the types of issues that you really take lightly. They can be pretty serious. Even though right now the Maple Leafs are, don't seem to be too concerned. They're saying he's probably going to be ready to go in a couple of weeks. That's all good if they're right. But considering the issues he's had before, you, d- you do wonder... If this is something that could linger, of course, uh, Timothy Lilgren is already out for six weeks. We already know that. And then, of course, Rasmus Sandin is not signed. Now, uh, Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick, who are actually in the process right now of doing a 32 Thoughts podcast tour, doing a bunch of podcasts recorded live, did their first live show last night in London, Ontario. Uh, the podcast was released today to the public uh, through the podcast platforms. Uh, so I had to listen to it, and they did talk about Rasmus Sandin. And Friedman went on to say, you know, obviously that there's still... Seems to be a gap in negotiations. Obviously, Sandine's looking for likely a two-year deal. Um, uh, that's what Lilgren got, but he wants, you know, somewhere around that $2 million mark. They, they look to be a, uh, using Jake Bean as a comparable, who signed a comparable contract at $2.3 million. There was some earlier in this process that were suggesting that his agency was using more of a, uh, Adam Bokvist as a comparable, but it looks like Bean is, is more likely what they're doing here because Bokvist is getting more money than that. He's making two, I think it's two six or two seven. Um, but Sandine obviously looking for around a two million dollar mark around two years. Doesn't want to do a one year deal because they'll revert to the qualifying offer and certainly looking for an opportunity. But at this point, if they can't get him signed, considering what they're starting with with the blue line injuries. To me, you would think that between the Leafs, they'd be saying, kind of pushing the fact of, you know, let's get this done, get you into camp, and get you to start the season in the top six because there very well could be an opportunity for, you know, even though it might not have looked like it, for you to get in there, and then you can prove yourself and then make it difficult on a coach to take you out of the lineup, essentially, right? That's really all a guy like him really should be looking for, in my opinion. He's a good defenseman, has a lot of potential down the road, um, but there are a lot of people that feel like he's driving too hard of a bargain here. So we will see what happens. I mean, it is possible you could see the Leafs make some sort of a trade. Uh, I don't think they don't want to trade Sandine. If it pushes too long and too far, it could always potentially come to that. Although right now, that's not really 
what people are thinking. If anything, you'd see the Leafs maybe make a, a depth move or uh, you know something like that. But they have so many forwards in the mix that they could maybe trade a forward before they get to the point that they got to put players on waivers. That's something that you could see at a Toronto. Uh, there's a lot of forwards battling for that bottom six roles, especially the fourth line. And uh, that's more likely we're going to see a trade. Sandine less likely, but certainly uh, looks like they're still really not much closer to getting a deal done. And if they have this opportunity here with the injuries, like if I can't sell them on getting signed and getting in there, I'm not really sure uh, what will. Now, another defenseman looking for a new contract is Nick Hag in Vegas. Uh, Hag often saw uh, deployment on the top pair last year with Alex Petrangelo. Uh, wasn't there on a full-time basis, but did play there quite a bit uh, and is certainly needing a new deal as well as one of the few remaining RFAs that need to be signed. We know Vegas, of course, has a big pool of LTIR availability with the contracts of Robin Leonard, Shea Weber, and now Nolan Patrick all going to be placed on that for the entire season. Uh, so they do have a little bit of flexibility. And Friedman went on to say in this uh, podcast from last night, saying that uh, he's talked to enough teams, uh, different people around the league, suggesting that they, a lot of them feel that Vegas might be up to something in that Maybe we will see a trade, and maybe that's why they're dragging their feet here on this Hag contract because they might be working on something else, and they might not, you know, if want to wait and see if it's going to happen first before they can kind of get this deal done. Uh, he, he said that, uh, which is not surprising. We all know and have seen uh, Bill Foley and uh, uh, George McPhee and uh, Kelly McCrimmon all kind of have the same mentality here that they're always up to something in Vegas. They always want to bring in. Like someone, something new and shiny is what we usually say. Uh, trying to make upgrades. Look at all the changes they've made to this roster the past couple of years. If there's anybody out there that's a higher pedigree player that's known to be available, they tried to make it happen. They want to bring them to Vegas. So certainly wouldn't be shocking if they do that. They're certainly not as deep up front anymore. Uh, they had to make some moves this offseason. Like Patch Ready, for example, wouldn't be shocking if they were trying to bring in another scoring type of forward. That, to me, would make a lot of sense. Uh, that maybe they're trying to figure things out that way. And you do wonder if Hag maybe could be involved in a deal or if he's not personally traded in, this, in the deal that they might be working on, that his contract will be impacted by it and they have to wait to get it done. So either way, it appears that enough people think Vegas is up to something working on a trade and we'll have to wait to see what materializes here. Uh, now in Philadelphia, we're expecting a tough season after the news of Ryan Ellis and Sean Couturier being... Uh, you know, we know Ellis is done for the year, uh, and it's possible that Couturier could be as well. If not, he's going to at least be out for a good stretch. And it was already going to be tough in Philly, I think it's fair to say, this year. Take away those two players, and it's just going to get that much worse. Uh, we've already seen comments from Chuck Fletcher saying they're going to play the kids a lot, which was certainly a bit of a change in direction, I think it's fair to say, based on their end-of-season comments. So that was a bit surprising to hear Fletcher make those remarks. Um, so you do have to wonder, though, one name that came up on the 32 Thoughts podcast, which makes a lot of sense, that you wouldn't have been expecting to talk about in the trade rumor mill, but it could start to come up, especially Especially if Philly gets off to a rough start, which in all honesty, I think is relatively quite likely, unfortunately for Flyers fans, that Travis Sanheim might be a name to watch. I mean, we know that last year they were happy with Sanheim Ristolainen pairing. They signed Ristolainen to an extension and you thought, well, maybe Sanheim Ristolainen might be a pair we see on this team for uh, years to come. Sandheim's still young enough that he would certainly generate a lot of attention and a lot of interest from around the league. So Friedman just mentioned him as a player to watch where he's on an expiring contract, not an overly expensive contract, and a defenseman that a lot of teams would likely have interest in. So should things get off to a rough start in Philly, obviously anybody there that's kind of, you know, doesn't have a lot of term in their contract will likely pop up. He said to expect a lot of Flyers rumors to be flying around probably in the first few months of the season, given a rough start, which is unfortunately, you know, quite likely at this point. And I also want to touch on Vancouver, and I do wonder about the possibility of a Bo Horvat trade. I know the intent appears to be to get him signed and keep their captain long term, just like they did recently for JT Miller. But there was also recent comments from Jim Rutherford on a radio hit that I do wonder if it should cause for concern for Canuck fans. He said that talking about the Miller signing is with Miller and Horvat both on expiring contracts. He said that they were also, as a management group, very worried about the possibility of not being able to come to terms with either player and the risk of losing both next offseason was something that they were concerned about. So now that they've got one of them signed, it takes the pressure off. Now, 
you know, I don't want to like maybe hopefully I'm not misinterpreting that, but it certainly makes it sound like that's going to be able to, you know, they're going to probably push a tougher bargain here with Horvat because of getting Miller done and that, you know, maybe it's not as concerning for them now. So not saying they don't like Bo. I think they do. I do think they intend to sign him. It's nothing like that at all. But, you know, there's sometimes there's a difference. The team will be like, yes, and we love this player, but we only want to sign him for this much. And if the player in their agency feels like they're worth much more than that and they're getting undervalued, then sometimes it becomes a disconnect and things don't work out. It's just that simple. It's a business at the end of the day. And even though I do feel like uh, the intentions are good on both sides, I do wonder with those kind of comments if that should kind of raise some red flags and cause for concern that maybe Horvat will end up becoming a trade piece. Now, of course, the other thing with this is it's going to depend, I think, a lot on how the Canucks season goes. If they don't do well and they're not looking like they're going to be a playoff team, okay, well, that's going to probably change things a bit as well. But if they're trending towards the playoffs, they're not going to want to trade a big piece of their core and their captain. Uh, so at the very least, he becomes their own rental. And if he remains unsigned at that point, then they guess they, can, they run the risk of you know losing him to free agency. Um you know, and they would have a period of time after the season to, to get things done too. But it's just hard to say. A lot of players don't like to negotiate through the year. I don't know if they will or they won't with this player. But it just caused, gave me a little cause for concern and wondering if they might actually be more willing to entertain a trade than many of us might have thought. So let me know your thoughts and all the news and rumors from today down in the comments. We'll talk about it further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all the 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.